first I want to say, dude, I was just watching your video. You're such an asshole, bro. Why? Okay, so the reason that I want to showcase this is I think that over the next few years, we're going to see more and more of rising YouTube stars doing stupid things. Now, we all know what happened with Logan Paul when he showed the dead body in the, the suicide forest. This is another issue where you've got young girls Twitter message DM in their 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 favorite content creators being flirty and obviously you just ignore that like it doesn't take a genius to work out that you just ignore it okay you just ignore it and this guy Romeo Lacoste has obviously chosen to go a different route but it's the things that he says it's the it's the it's the way that he tries to defend himself and on multiple occasions, like in the states that he, he's um, had his girlfriends and had these issues with, the legal age of consent is 18. Like you got to remember that in America, most of the legal age of consent is 18. So when they talk about 17, 16, you know, 15, almost 16, this is totally underage for America. You know, you've really got to keep that in mind. So the girls in question, um, are accusing him of being 19, he's 30 something now, but when he was 19 going out with a 14 year old, when he was 24, 25, DMing girls on Twitter and all this. Just listen to this and look at Keemstar's face as he's talking, like it's priceless. So let's just have a little listen. I just, I'm, all I'm saying is that some of this stuff in my opinion just doesn't make sense. Like you guys are comparing, you know, like stuff from 2016 to surfacing now, like how many of you guys were different three years ago? Not saying that, like, obviously, not everyone was a night and day difference, but right. I know for me, I was in a completely different world three days ago, like, uh, and three years ago, I was in a completely different mind state, you know? I get um, that. <laughs> I totally understand that, but we're talking about, like, a child predator. Like, I mean, targeting young girls. Uh, another girl came out um, and said that she's known you all the way back to the MySpace days when you were an adult and would date 14 year olds, including herself, you dated her. Another girl that we interviewed here on Drum Alert, um, who's friends with Luna, uh, she wanted to remain anonymous, your, your ex-girlfriend from 10 years ago, said that you were 19 that's or- That's exactly what it is. Said she wants to, can I say her name? Cause if she wants to go on here and put me on blast, she might as well. Uh, I mean, I can't stop you from saying her name, but. Okay, yeah, Lindsay Montiero, I, I had friends with Luna. I dated her back when I was like, 19 years old and, and she and she was 14 right i don't believe that she was 14 at all um I oh, know actually her. i take that back i remember her saying that she may have been 15. i think she might have been late 15 possibly it, this is this is me being extreme she may have been late 15. i remember her being like, more like what? 17. but I dated her for about three years. I lived in her house. I moved <clears> in her house. Her parents were completely cool with it. We slept in completely separate be separate bedrooms. Um, she said you I peed on her. <laughs> I don't remember that. And, and it I and it traumatized her, like in a. It, really, it traumatized her. That's what like, she said. Oh my god! Dude, but I mean, dude, okay, so two different girls have come out and said. Okay, so you heard him say there that he thinks he may have been late 15, possibly 17, still underage. You heard him when he said about the girl being peed on, and he says, oh, what? She says that, that traumatized her. Oh, come on. You know, he's, he's trying to worm his way out. This is, once again, this is just liberties being taken with young women through social media, through fame, through influencer power. It's wrong. And it's gonna get worse. I just want to point that out. So I just wanted to make sure that you realize the sort of stuff that goes on on the surface on this kind of platform. And uh, there's one more, one more YouTube channel that we're gonna just have a wee sneaky peek at. Okay, it's gonna be our fun one. Okay, on this channel, I provide information to make rational arguments on the topic of minor attraction and child sexuality. I also speak with the people who are kind, who are kind to. Sh I also speak with people who are kind. To show that we are human beings, if possible, I will also engage non-maps, a minor attraction person, minor I don't know, in discussion or debates. This is an informative channel, but I do hope to entertain as well. Okay. 
Is minor attraction wrong? Yes. Congratulations, me, 100 subs live stream. These are all from years and years ago, and there is only a handful of videos. This is like a two and a half hour long live stream. Hello, my name is Carter Brown, and I am a minor attracted person. Oh no. I'm here with a headless one. Let me, I, I just want to make sure I heard that right. Like, I just want to put this back together. I just want to make sure I heard that right. Hello, my name is Carter Graf, and I am a minor attracted person. I'm here with... <sighs> I want to hear what this panel have to say, man. Right, let's let's get some ch... Oh, God, let's get to some chat in here. I just found Carter Graf's channel, and I've been commenting on the things. I've been doing a lot of research that is also relevant to my college major. And it really got me to start thinking about things. And I started uh, kind of siding with you guys, as if, if you guys saw my comments, you would see. And that led to me and Carter Graf talking through Skype. And uh, he eventually asked me if I wanted to do the stream. So that's pretty much what happened. I mean, I could flesh it out more, but it would take a while to explain why I came to these, you know, different views and stuff like that, and like what I've read. It's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, that is that is really cool, actually. I think it's really a. Uh, it makes me feel really optimistic that we can have somebody oh my God. talk with us and be this one. So this guy that's talking, this is his profile picture, which is obviously a really young girl. Wow, that is messed up. Why be respectful and not like a oh my God. insulting, but the thing is you're not even a map or whatever. Oh my God, you're not even a map or whatever. Oh my God. Uh, Todd is the um, writer of the Salon articles. Uh, mm. Defending uh, maps, and he's done uh, interviews yeah. in it worldwide. Is it like in all around the world, or is it just yeah. in like Europe? Or... Uh, I don't know as well. I feel like every time I f I, I'm, I hear someone talking about this, they're all either they sound like they're under twenty or they're all really young, right? And I just feel like this is becoming some sort of f trend. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It just, I just see, see my trust. I feel like I'm seeing a trend in this where we're going to have organizations run by older pedophiles who have younger map spokespersons to try and normalize it to a younger age and category of people. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I think that's what concerns me. Let me know in the description what you guys think. Okay, so I think the last thing I'm going to touch on on the pedophile uh, group sort of subject um, without going into the Facebook side of it. it. There's just so much, and I'm covering it all in the documentary. Um, so stay tuned for that. There'll be a link to the trailer for this documentary for those who are interested, but I just wanted to touch on on something that I've not got any evidence for, um, but is, is an issue on Google, which is things like Craigslist in America, Gumtree over here, where a lot of the um, personal ads for massage and for escorts and things like this, there seems to be a going trend now where pedophiles and people who are interested in sex with minors have slipped into these sites as well. It's not new, it's been going on for a while, and I will have some sort of evidence and things like that of that in the documentary, just in case any of you are wondering why Facebook and all these... Um, you know, Gumtree and, and, and Craigslist and things like that haven't been featured in this. They will be in the documentary. This is just this is just becoming a long video and I just wanted to cover and touch on a few points. Okay, so this is a weird one. Uh, maybe a lot of you will have heard about this. Maybe some of you will have no idea what I'm talking about. But this is the online fetish of incest porn. Um, now, a lot of this is Hollywood stuff. It's just mainstream. It is actually really mainstream. This fetish, if you will, where you've got an older woman, a younger girl, stepmom, stepdaughter. Da, 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 something ends up happening. Wham bam. Her boyfriend turns up, and they're all getting jiggy. That's the premise for most of them. But for those of you who don't know, I mean, that's quite a, it's quite a, a common, widely, when I say common, I mean, a lot of porn sites have this, ta like, category, if you will. So, I just thought I'd touch on this because 
I think a lot of you will find this bizarre, for especially those of you who might not necessarily watch porn or know anything about porn. So I felt like it was worth just touching on a little bit. But I thought we would look at the more sinister -y side of it all, because you do get quite a lot of rape videos or a sexual assault, I guess. Uh, on people doing it to their sisters or their cousins and things like this so there is a kind of reality to the fetish I guess but there's certainly a completely fake mainstream version of that fetish as well so yeah so this is apparently a guy with his sister um, it's a weird fetish that's obviously come from somewhere um, and for me Fantasy is fantasy, but the reality of something like that is pretty messed up, uh, if I'm being honest with you. This next clip um, is sort of, again, extreme content, it's humiliation, it's really, really young looking girls in incredibly adult videos. Um, and I mean, this lassie is getting peed all over. And she looks real young. And there is this kind of... There is a lot of online sort of teen categories in just mainstream porn. And schoolgirl fetishes and girls that are petite and look really young. It, it is popping up more and more. It is totally legal, right? It is mainstream. We're talking mainstream here. Um, but it's just we it's just weird. It's just weird. For me, it's weird. It's not the sort of thing that has ever floated my boat. Um, it's just not. So I just wanted to touch on that and point out that there is some really weird porn uh, that is totally fine, totally legal, and is sitting on Google. It is crazy. Um, and it's site after site after site. I mean, some of these sites are just dedicated to the incest fetish. Um, and the more unmainstream looking the site is, the more really questionable content there is. Stepdaddy raping, crying daughter roleplay porn. So again, this lassie, really young, sitting doing homework, pigtails, little sort of blouse on. All designed to look super young. And yeah, I mean... It's all designed just to look like a full-on rape. <sighs> Great! So, this is the world we live in. It is a super mainstream fetish now. Obviously, this teeny, young versus old, incest, mum, stepdaughter, mum, stepson stuff it's out there it's here it's on google it's kind of weird i just wanted to bring it to your attention i'll, I'll bank on it <laughs> awesome. yeah. okay so like i yeah. said i'm pretty sure this is this is yeah. definitely that's, just that's some awesome. hollywood fantasy nonsense but <clears throat> like i say i've never seen like fake death porn or murder porn or anything like that so I'm just letting this play because I can't actually skip the video so I'm just letting it play um, I think it's important for us all to realize what is out there from a legal point of view and what can be presented to the public completely legally again right listen I get that this is Hollywood and fake and it's just the same as an action movie or whatever okay it's just interesting to see that there's companies out there who cater to a sexual fetish as opposed to just telling a, f a movie story. Do you know what I mean? Like, to me, this is... Somebody's thought to themselves, Oh, yeah, this guy's out there, like, murdering women, right? Let's cater to that. It's... It's... <laughs> Get in the shower so we can get moving. Yeah, breakfast. He's in the cupboard. Yeah, that sounds good.
He's in the cupboard! Okay, perfect. Oh no! Oh, Jesus. So, he's just cut one girl's throat, obviously. Fake. Stabbed another one. Target demographic for this. Mm. Wow. I'll tell you something, right? Let me just pause this. And uh, this is going to sound really weird. But see, from an amateur budget filmmaking point of view, they've nailed the key points in how to uh, trick you into believing that you couldn't prove that this was fake. I mean, it is fake. But the way that it's been shot, the, the the cuts, the angles and things like that has been really cleverly done. So, and, and the only reason I say that is I'm a very big fan of found footage movies. Like, I'm a big fan of the found footage genre. Any found footage movies you want to suggest, leave them in the comments. But a lot of the time when budget and cinematography comes into play in these things, that's where it falls apart for me. That and soundtracks. Soundtracks on found footage movies should be a natural thing that occurs within the scene, not something that's overlaid. But from this, this is quite convincing. I mean, 100% fake. There's no ifs or buts. But what is the demographic for this? I mean, this has to be to fulfill people's murder fantasies or fetishes or just serial killers. Who knows? Let's keep this going. Okay, so I think the first girl is now pretending to have died. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what's going on. I think it's important to pay attention as well to the noises and things like this, especially for the sexual content, um, who that would appeal to. Now, I just want to see what level this gets to from the gore side into the, the, the sexual side. So I'm just going to skip this because I refresh and I'm like, I can skip forward now. So I just want to see if this turns into porn because who the frick is this for? Really weird. Yeah, so there's no more wounds, there's not actually any makeup being put on or prosthetic cuts or anything like that. It's just really, really bloody and it's 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 really weird. We're at, we're at the end. It is completely fake, um, but pfft. I mean, that was one we just stumbled on. So, yeah, really, really, really weird. So what do we call that, like mur murder porn, I guess? Slaughtered and abused, I mean, wow. Crazy, crazy. Oh my god. Okay. So I brought this on us. I, I, this is my fault. I've just Googled, I've just searched cannibal porn. So I just thought to myself, nah, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be a thing. But it looks like it's a thing. Oh god. This is going to be fun. I mean, I'm assuming again this is all going to be fake. I don't really want to see this guy getting his knob cut off. This looks like a movie, but let's let's see. I'm just gonna watch the one that's a minute rather than the one that's 11 minutes. All right. This is grim. Okay, we might have to go back to like the the, the 12 minute one just to get some context here. Oh yeah, wait. I said I had a surprising ending. Oh Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's lovely. Oh man. <laughs> Oh man, so yeah, full on weird, weird video. And then right at the very end, she's all like, yeah, bites his dick off. Real graphic style. Again, totally fake, totally fake. But who is this for? Like, who's the audience for this? Like, who is sitting down and going, hey, gotta have myself a nice little one on one. <laughs> Personal romance evening. Got myself some fucking cannibal porn. Like, what is going on? It's too weird. <sighs> okay, so here we are on the way back. Way back. The way back. Way, the way back. Blah, 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 blah. 
Okay, so here we are on the Wayback Machine, having a look at the classic Cannibal Cafe. Um, this is this this site ran for a long time. You can see we're back in 2001. Um, it became quite a cult thing, um, and it's a, it's 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 not it's not a fun place. So let's have a little look around and see uh, how much blurring we have to do. Let's have a look. Okay, please sign in the guest book. Your comments. All right. Let's have a scroll through these. Whoa, I'm really fantasized about being butchered, roasted, and eaten. Male impalement. Whoa, Amazon hunters, male long pigs. Okay, yeah, so good old Armin Muse. Um, Muse, Mewies, who knows? Armin, right? Interview with a cannibal documentary sheds new light on one of Germany's most infamous murderers. Basically, this guy uh, ate his friend. His gay lover, and I mean, they videotaped it. They sat down and ate parts of the guy together. I think it was grim, but I just again want to point out, just for anyone who thinks that people posting themselves online to be eaten is nonsense, it's not. Uh, staff, okay, here we go. Oh wow, look at that, Raven Chen. That totally doesn't sound like a superhero name at all. Hero Connors, come on. Come on, come on! <laughs> no, no, this has to be nonsense. Nonsense. What does human flesh taste like? It's prepared by us, unbelievable. Only meats are likely to find in stores as pork as pork is the closest match. Is cannibalism wrong? Wow. Prion disease of the nervous system, such as kuru, are associated with the consumption of brain tissue, which is not part of our menu. Uh, answering, does cannibalism cause disease? That is crazy. Contact, please say they've got a mobile number. Ah, oh, I wish these places had phone numbers. We could have just called them up. So we've had a look at this. Really bizarre. Leave your comments down below what you think about this one, guys. Um, but yeah, cannibals on Google. It's not unheard of. Okay, so uh, there's a video that I just watched and never pressed record, so now I have to sit through it again for you guys. Uh, this, look, look. D Diamond Gallus, famed avant-garde performer, artist, composer, keyboardist, and vocalist, has been described as capable of the most unnerving vocal terror. Musologist Suman McClary writes that Gallus heralds a new moment in history of musical representation, focusing on themes, themes of suffering, injustice, and despair. Her work... Her works are categorized by visceral, sh oh, visceral shrieks and wails reminiscent of glossolia or tongues. Ah, of course, that's exactly... See, I'm talking like you've just watched this with me. This is going to make sense when you see this video. Um, I got to stop itching my ear. I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm old. I'm getting old. I feel like there's like freaking like hairs like this. Hello and welcome to my channel. It's not good. Okay, so very uh, yeah, and tongues. She's collaborated with Led Zeppelin. Oh shit! Oh, sh Bassett, uh, Paul Jones, and her work has appeared in such mainstream films as Natural Born Killers, Franz for Commas, Dracula. So she's legit. Like she is a legit performer. I think we're going to start it here. I'm not going to put you through it through it all, but there's there's a couple of key moments that. Are quite interesting. Love it. What are you doing tomorrow night? You don't have the right audition papers. Craziness. So, you know, if you're into that, nip down to the old cannibal club and uh, enjoy yourself. So, we've had a look at this. Really bizarre. Leave your comments down below what you think about this one, guys. Um, but yeah, cannibals on Google. 
it's not unheard of. And yeah, I think we've looked at some real weird stuff there. The cannibals, the murder porn, the cannibal porn where the girl like bit the guy's area off. Weird. Really weird. And I tell you something, man, I've been on the internet for a long time and it never fails to shock and, and amaze at the same time. So moving on. Alright guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video on some of the surface web horrors. You can see that it's not just a deep web where these issues occur. And just to anyone who allows their kids to have free roam on the internet, I hope you understand the dangers of just unsupervised wandering on the surface web. I mean, even a couple of times during this, the making of this, I was jumping from site to site, looking like I was clicking on a file on one site, but it was actually a deep embedded link to another site. This is how a lot of people, or a lot of kids, or anyone in fact, ends up on content that they don't necessarily want to see. It is a big problem, and I strongly suggest anyone with kids looks into a, a parental app and, and just uh, some sort of security for themselves and the, their kids on the internet. Not going to rant too much about it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave comments below, man. I love to hear your comments. Join the Discord. Follow me on Twitter. Just, you know, get involved because there is a great little community on Discord. And without them, this video wouldn't have happened. So I hope you've enjoyed it. From me, Ron Swanson, as always, guys, be safe out there.